Teaching Tilt Brush, and this lesson is about customizing your environment. Whether you're using the basic environment that we're using here, or even if you use any of these other environments, like our pedestal environment, oops, pedestal, or even if we're using one of the more colorful environments like pistachio or lemonade, these guys, we can start to take control. So if this is a little too colorful for you, we can look at how you take control and customize these environments. Now there's two parts to this. There's the actual background. In this case, you can see it's the mountains with a light fog, dark sky going down to pale sky. The second part is the actual lighting. So if I draw in here with some paper, you can see how there's light and there's shadow, there's highlights, there's as that passes through. We can actually change the direction of the lighting, the color of the lighting in a couple of different ways. So this lesson is about customizing the environment you're painting in. So here we are, we're going to start with the default. And the first piece we're going to look at is we're going to look at the backdrop. So in our advanced settings, the backdrop is what controls what we see in the background. Here's the control panel. The top part controls the actual sky, and my sky here is going from a dark gray to a pale gray. You can see the bubble is a dark gray to the pale gray. I'm going to move it closer to the camera. You can use your controller to grab this sphere whoops, and rotate, let me get into it here, work with how it works. You can see how now that I'm in front of it, instead of a paintbrush, my controller turns into a pointer. So I'm going to use the pointer to grab the sky and rotate the sky. You can see how it's changing the horizon. It's changing the way the sky looks depending on the way I move the sphere. Let's move it so the light side is on top. So now it's going light side to dark. So the sphere is controlling the way the background appears. And you'll notice when you point at it, it tends to put your pointer circle on the back part of the sphere. So depending on how you drag that sphere around, controls how your background is going to look. So these naturally control the color. Dark side, light side. So if I change this to a vibrant blue, and then I change this one to a hot pink, we have vibrant blue to hot pink in our sphere. So things like pistachio, lemonade, they're all about using these controls to control the background. This particular map also has the mountains in the background. So we have this mountain controller down here. Clicking on fog, if you look right now, the fog is at a very low setting and we can see the mountains very clearly. As I drag the fog level up, haze starts to take over. We can still see the silhouette. Now, if we had painting back there, same effect happens. I'm going to move very far back this way and paint something. And while we're here, we can see that painting. We can see that object. But as it's moving closer to us, we're getting more natural color. I'm using a grayish green, I guess. Let's see if I can get a little more vibrant here. But when we, partly because we've got, there we go, now we can see the colors and things. But the farther we get from it, the faster it gets sort of this gray washout. That's that fog effect. If I turn the fog effect down, you can see it stays a lot brighter, a lot farther into the distance. So the fog, especially for computers that don't have a lot of power, fog helps keep things a little more stable because it doesn't need to draw as much detail at a distance. It's both an atmospheric effect and it's also helpful for lower end processors. Now the fog effect, you can see the scale on my little mountainscape down there. The brighter the mountains, the less fog we have interfering. So this is the background panel for controlling and customizing the environment. Now the other part about environments, let's get this out of the way. There we go. The other part of our environment is, in fact, let's go back to default, is the lighting itself. Now I'm going to draw an object using one of my brushes here. 
And as I've got curves and circles and lines, you can see how the highlighting is affected. I'm going to use green, and I'm also going to use a flat gray. What I'm about to do is change the lighting in this area. The gray will show the actual color of the lighting more. With the green, you're going to see how the colored lighting can affect the way your painting looks. And on the controller, the lighting is the little star in our advanced panel here. Lights. It also has its own separate panel. Let's come back here has its own separate panel. Lights come in three parts. Right, let's get so you can see. Three parts. We have a sun, a moon, and a sphere. Down at the bottom, sun, moon, and blank. The sun is the primary light, the brightest light. In this case, it's what's causing the bright green highlights, the bright gray highlights. I can actually use my mouse and drag that around. You can see on the sphere how it's showing you where the light is shining. You can see on the painting behind me, as I move the light source around, it changes the color on the objects. So the sun, it's three-dimensional behind or in front. The chip down here affects the color. So I'm going to give myself a very strong red light. Now you can see how the gray is strongly tinted red because of the light source. This little animation shows you shadows. I'm going to move it down a little bit. So the sun is your primary light source. I'm going to put it back to a fairly neutral color. Primary light source. The moon is a secondary light source. This one's much more subtle. You can see on the sphere a slight other highlight. Again, I'm going to give it a strong color. This one I'm going to give a vibrant blue. So you can see on the sphere here, the blue highlight is the secondary source. It's easier to see on the gray. Let me rotate this so you can see my gray sphere. As I move the blue moon around, you can see sort of a blue tint, a blue highlight, Keep especially in the darker area. Keep let's, moving it from the right. There. Now, okay, let's see if that. Now you can see the blue a little bit better. So I'm going to move the primary highlight off to the side. And the blue highlight, you can see as I move it around, it affects the things. Finally, the third chip is ambient light. It's the local area light all around. So right now it tends to be muted uh, neutral color. But again, if I crank up the red, you can see how the entire area gets tinted just a little more red. Even though my paintbrush is set to gray paint, I'm painting, the red is tinting the whole thing. And the blue is tinting the shadows. So I have this red glow with purplish shadows as these colors are blending on the, on the objects. So if you actually have solid objects, you can affect the way they appear by changing the light source. So this is the direction of the light, grabbing the sun and moving the primary, grabbing the moon and moving the secondary. These are affecting, I'm going to go for a very dark ambient light. Now I'm going to go for a very dark primary light. Now I'm going to go for a very dark tertiary light. And now you can see my whole painting is a very dark atmosphere. So maybe a dark atmosphere, but now I'm going to have a red, fairly strong underlight. So now as I'm painting things, I've got this effect of this red glow coming up from underneath. So you can really change the atmosphere and feeling of your painting by changing the way the light source hits your objects. We'll be doing other paintings that use examples of this, but that's how you control it. These panels are found on your main controller. Lighting and background to customize your environment that you're playing with. These controls work with all the environments in Tilt Brush, so you can get whatever kind of effect you want. So even if we go into something like the pedestal, and I get the pedestal up into view, 
you can see how the lighting makes the shadows on the pedestal. So if I change the lighting so that the color of the lighting is a little more primary pink, and now I'm going to change the direction to come from this direction. Now I'm going to grab the moon, and we're going to give the moon a strong blue glow. So now you can see the blue glow in the shadow of the red. Now we'll do a green ambient light. So there's a green tone overall. So changing lighting or changing backdrops, again, I can change the fog level, how quickly do we lose color and distance, and I can choose the color and arrangement of the sky. These are the ways we can customize our environment so we can paint with whatever style we want. Practice it, play with it, have a lot of fun with these because this is how you really make your painting unique. I'm going to remember the letter C this time so that hopefully you guys can keep us posted and let us know what you think. Thank you very much for joining us. Have fun with Tilt Brush.